You're watching an RH Reality Check production brought to you by rhrealitycheck.org. Learning sex ed is a big deal to me. Um, and it's really here, strange to hear from a 14 year old. But I know a lot of students who are my age in a bad position because they didn't get the right education. And I'm in ninth grade, and high school is definitely a big time that is important when a lot of students become sexually active. And I think it's a big deal, and people should learn about it in middle schools, is what I think. I do firmly believe that abstinence is the best choice, of course. But the statistics tell us that 50%, approximately a little more than that, of high school students are sexually active. So they need this kind of education when they're younger so that they can make good choices, not just about whether they want to become sexually active, but if they do, how can they protect themselves? But I've been through our curriculum guide, choosing classes, and I've never seen a course that was offered that had anything to do with sex ed. Let's talk about sex. That's the call from some parents in Seminole County. New numbers show sexually transmitted diseases are running rampant among teenagers, and some parents worry their schools are stuck in the dark ages. What Susie Aisa Diaz found out when students are learning about sex isn't coming from any textbooks. It's hard to even really classify what's going on in Seminole County. It's certainly not comprehensive. You know, most of the time it's abstinence only, and the, the school policy um, is, is an abstinence only policy. Um, and, and some of the kids don't get anything at all. So we know that there's definitely some of this abstinence-only money fu uh, funneling itself into the classroom. Um, and then as for what's actually going on in individual high schools and middle schools uh, with the regular classroom teacher, we've heard a lot of really different things from different parents and different teens. Some of the teens that we have talked to say that they haven't really heard anything in the classroom, um, and others have gotten some education, but it has not been medically accurate. Because of all the confusion over what's being taught in Florida's public schools, Planned Parenthood and SICUS, a national advocacy group, investigated just how the federal abstinence money is being spent in the state's 67 school districts. It's shocking that the vast majority of abstinence only until marriage funds are actually going into the South and Florida is a prime example. Florida gets nearly, th gets just over $13 million a year from the federal government to do abstinence only until marriage programming. They cough in three and a half million dollars of their own money, and this all after the national government itself has said that these programs do not work. What we don't know is where the money is going. We know the first layer. Um, with Title V abstinence only funding, it goes directly to our state's Department of Health, and then it goes to subgrantees. And we know who those subgrantees are. Seek has filed a series of freedom of information requests to investigate exactly where this federal abstinence money was spent and to examine exactly what was being taught in these curricula. Those curricula have um, been known to provide inaccurate information, gender stereotypes, um, be their fear and shame based, um, and we find that those curricula, they are in our Florida schools. Um, the other thing we found that I thought was really interesting is um, we have a lot of locally created and locally based um, absence only programs happening. Uh, and so a lot of them share the same characteristics, gender stereotypes, um, inaccurate information, and most markedly is out-of-date information. Out-of-date information like one school's health class that teaches 20-year-old statistics. Facts like most AIDS cases occur in adults between 30 and 39 years old. In fact, half of all AIDS cases occur in people under 25. In Florida, which has the second highest HIV transmission rate in the nation, this is a mistake the public schools cannot afford to make. The report also reveals that federal abstinence money is going to combat abortion. It represents a wonderful example of how these dollars are just fueling far right-wing organizations. Uh, in particular in Florida, a large amount of abstinence only until marriage money are going to right-wing crisis pregnancy centers. 
These are pseudo health centers that deny women basic reproductive health information, refuse to provide referrals where they can get real information, and they really undermine our reproductive rights. So Florida is a prime example where these dollars are fueling the culture war, and for that reason, it's also got to end. CBA funding, in some ways, is the most dangerous of the abstinence-only funding because it goes directly to the, the grantees. And what we found in Florida is those grantees can be um, very faith-based um, organizations or crisis pregnancy centers that have been known to provide misleading and inaccurate information to women seeking care. Uh, they hold themselves out to the public to be medical um, facilities when they're actually not, and they've been reaping the benefits, too, of these dollars. The report found millions of dollars going each year to abstinence programs promoted by James Dobson and another run by a close associate of the Bush administration. What's more, there are no statewide standards for fact-checking the medical accuracy of these programs. I think the other solution is passing our Healthy Teens Act, um, which says that if you're a Florida public school and you're already teaching about um, family planning, pregnancy, or sexually transmitted infections, including HIV and AIDS, then the information you teach must be uh, age-appropriate, medically and factually accurate, and comprehensive. Um, and that, if our bill actually, the Healthy Teens Act, does become law, then those who are CBA grantees can't go into schools teaching abstinence-only programs. Um, because if they are teaching anything about the issues of sex ed, the information has to be medically accurate and comprehensive. You're watching an RH Reality Check production brought to you by rhrealitycheck.org.